Good morning. Welcome to Country Living. The frost is steaming off of everything. Beautiful. The pond was right foggy this morning. It was so cool, but I didn't get out on time to to catch it. Too much other stuff to do, as is life. to see the the frosty tips there with the sun. I can zoom in. There we go. <laughs> I can see my breath. So I've been asked to do the uh, seven questions in seven minutes and I'll be doing that today <laughs> maybe when it's a little warmer out <laughs>
it's much warmer out now. Well, let's get to these questions. The first question is, who are you? I'm Mary Soul Tardif Giroux, now Mary Soul Dealey. I don't know what else to say. I've got two X chromosomes. I was born in Quebec, not Ontario. Ma première langue, c'est français, pas l'anglais. My first language was actually French, Québécois. My second language is English. Strange enough. Came to Ontario when I was a kid. We followed my dad here. He was working in the bush. Pretty much the story of everybody that came from Quebec, I think, the work in the in the logging industry. I love plants, obviously. I love animals and nature and I don't know. I'm a workaholic too, so it's hard to find a, a middle ground in all that. I like music. I've played all sorts of instruments growing up. Trombone, trumpet, flute, oboe, bassoon. I tried it all and there's only one that I stuck with. Probably the easiest one. There's only nine notes in the whole scale. <laughs> Bet you weren't expecting that one, were you? So the next question is, um, what country or region are you from? I am right now in northwestern Ontario, Canada. I'm about an hour's drive, which is a hundred and something kilometers from a city called Thunder Bay, Ontario. I'm in a town called Dorian. Uh, Dorian is home of Womet Canyon which is a really neat place to go. Maybe I'll film there at some point. And also Eagle Canyon, which has the longest zip line and the longest suspension bridge. So uh, yeah, fun adventures there. I've already showed you lots of the area already. Well, not lots, this area is vast, but a lot of uh, nice wilderness here. And I'll be showing you a lot more now that all the fall colors are out. Yeah, that's right. Fall colors way too soon way too soon so the next question was um, what's your first bonsai I did have bonsai previously um, unfortunately uh, at least some of them are no longer living I uh, lived in the city before and I did, couldn't afford good apartments so actually some of my bonsai froze in my apartment uh, didn't live and the um, the cedars that I had because I just I moved so often uh, over seven times in one year once <laughs> my dad wasn't too happy about helping me about move that often but yeah um, I ended up giving them to a friend of mine and I'm, I'm pretty sure they just planted them in their yard um, sorry but since I restarted bonsai now uh, this ficus is my first one. There were three in the pot and um, I gave one to each of my kids that seemed interested at first but uh, lost interest later. Um, so this one got toppled by the greenhouse so I'll have to do some changes to it. I have to repot it and uh, fix this one branch and a few other things but it's going on four years with me it's my first one this round still alive pretty good the next question was uh, what is your worst bonsai and why well I think my worst bonsai is George here I got him and I promised to hug him and love him forever and I am. He's not dead. 
He's just dormant. So the next question was, how did I get into bonsai? Well, actually, it's a long story, but my dad worked at a place for over 15 years. He was building uh, transport trailers and stuff like that. And um, the owner of that establishment actually had a bonsai in their house. And I was fascinated by it. That's how I originally got into bonsai. But with all the moves and everything, I had to kind of put that on the back burner. And then um, I got back into bonsai because of my desert rose. Actually, I was trying to figure out how to um, prune it back or cut it without killing it. So I looked up a bunch of stuff about desert rose and adenium and whatnot, and I found um, I found a channel that had them as bonsai, which I didn't even think would be possible with an adenium, but I guess it is. So then uh, I started watching her channel um, just to learn about that specific plant because it's over 20 years old now. I've had it for a long time and I never trimmed it until last year. So it was huge. And then um, I found Nigel and uh, it was, that's, uh, yeah, that was it. Here I am. Woo! So the last question is, um, what's the most you've ever paid for a tree or what tree type do you like working on and why? I suppose I can answer both of them. Um, the most expensive tree I have is actually this Bougainvillea. It was uh, $28.99 for this little stick. But I actually didn't pay $28.99. They gave me two for the price of one, or they gave it to me at half price and there was two, so I said, can I have them both? And they let me have them both. So technically, this isn't the most I paid for a tree. So the most I paid for a tree is actually these two these two olives. So these two olives I bought last winter or during the winter and I paid $25 each for these tiny little twigs and actually they're more than double the um, the thickness that they were when I got them. Yeah, so these are the two trees I paid the most for that are in my collection. So the second part of that question was, um, or the other question I could have answered, which I'm answering anyways, are um, what type of tree do you like working on and why? Well, it's hard to answer that because I'm trying out a bunch of new trees and I don't know if I've been uh, doing this long enough to have a preferred one. I know I like my ficuses because Every time you trim them, prune them, the gain is quick. I don't know how to explain that. They come back very quickly, so you can see um, everything you've done um, a lot sooner than a slow-growing tree. But I also like... Um, I also like the uh, hibiscus. For the same reason uh, they come back so quickly and then you can see the results of everything very quickly but i also like my pomegranates because i just really like the pomegranates yeah it's a hard thing to answer i'm just starting with my with my olives i gave this one its first prune the other one i never touched because it's still struggling um, my spruce, I've got a little bit of experience with. I've only trimmed it once and I've finally got one to survive winter. This is brand new and I'm terrified of it. And I want to see what's under there, but I also don't want to kill it. My, um, 
my figs. I'm also brand new to, started from seed, so I'm not sure if I'll like working on them or not. I really like the succulents. I just like them. Yeah. The bougainvilleas. I do enjoy the bougainvilleas. Not so much working on them, but I, I just, I like them as a species. I just love how they look and how they act and I'm not sure why all its leaves are curled up. They always do that when I bring them outside. But since they've been in the shop here, they're starting to open up. And when I bring it in the house, it'll get regular leaves again. I'm not sure what I'm doing that's causing it. My ficus do the same thing when I have them outside. The leaves um, curl up in half if they're in the sun. All the fall colors must have actually got a frost on them. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the answer to that is, I don't know. And why? Because of my experience level. Starting to get the place ready, move stuff around, and uh, get ready for bringing the plants in. So, I've, uh, I'm going to cut apart my king begonias. It's getting too big. I brought the shelf over from the other side, and I'm uh, going to start bringing stuff in fairly soon. That's Mojo. He's the one making all the racket. Yeah. My husband made the mistake of mouthing off to me. Just kidding. Where's my Oscar? There she is. So, you've learned a little bit about me, I guess. A little bit more than you already knew. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Be safe out there.